Barbara? Chapter 7. Then you really mean that I want to marry you? Yes, Miss Garden. I cannot believe that I'm the first man to have proposed to you. No, but... Barbara, are you all right? Darling. Judy, I'll do 20 letters for health and happiness, and then we'll do invitations in the diary. Oh, and please tell Nigel no more scrambled eggs. And it's the television appearance, so a very, very pretty dress. Yes, Mrs. Cartland. Escape from love? Yes, well, I will try and talk. The flame is love. Yes, a more contemporary approach. The river of love. So have you thought any more to my marketing strategy? With the meat. The housewife buys a jolly good read with her Sunday joint. Do you hurt the butchers a terrible oh, yes, people? Yes, of them do have love in the title. But, she writes about romance, not network. Wrapped in cellophane, I suppose. What other man could be so persistent at the same time, so tender? Question mark. So gentle and yet so masterful? Question mark. She thought of how he kissed her. Okie day, not the thing about Today, I'll talk to her today. Hello. You must be Helen. Ah, here she is. Mums. Morning, everyone. Are we ready? Mummy, this is your new literary assistant. She'll be with you in the study, taking dictation. I love your books, Mrs. Cartland. My mother and I, we both... When I was in hospital for tonsils, I read A Marriage Made in Heaven. And, well, it, it really cheered me up. What are you wearing? Sorry? I don't allow women to wear trousers in my house. Oh, I didn't... I'm sorry, my fault. I've I'm done 25. To... The diary will have to wait. Come on, let's go. Yes, so the publishers are telling me there's a bit of a glut, really. So I think you can afford to slow down. Slow down? They have no manners and no marketing skills. Well, you know what they're like. Dukes and virgins are all very nice, but it's the 1970s. Let's have sex. Romance is dead. Well, not dead exactly. Oh, stop it. Stop fussing. Romance never dies, Ian. Barbara. You have made a fortune on the back of the sanctity of marriage and the blushing bride. But is that really what women want these days? Yes, of course. A career girl is just a pseudo-second-rate man who looks terrible in trousers. <laughs> a real woman's ambition. But you were a career girl. You've worked all your life. In the 1920s, you were a journalist for the Daily Express. No, 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 no. A real woman's ambition is a glorious white wedding and the sublime happiness of marriage. Men should work. Women should be pampered and adored. Oh, sorry, Barbara. That's absolute rubbish, and you know it. But women now are liberated. No, 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 no. To advocate freedom is a, is a wicked, wicked thing. There are girls in St. Albans who are simply roaring with disease. St. Albans is a nice little cathedral. <laughs> but, Barbara, that's... Things are also so much better these days. Better? Better? Men are on strike. There's rubbish in the streets. We have this ghastly women's list. Mother. Did all those young men sacrifice their lives for England to become a point of nothing? Perhaps it's time for a bit of a rethink, Mummy. Good Lord, it's Barbara Cartland. <laughs> Lord Louis, how are you? Barbara, what a surprise. I've just been to the Abbey, another memorial service. Oh, I'm sorry. We've been on television. It's wonderful to see you. How long has it been? Oh, two years. The uh, St John's Ambulance fundraiser at Shrewsbury. You know, I do believe this is serendipity, Barbara. You are precisely the person I want to talk to, privately. Oh. Monkey glands? Who told you that? A friend. She read about it somewhere. Oh, no, no. Vitamin E, biostrath and honey. Just a little pick-me-up needed, really. I'm not quite... I dozed off after lunch on Tuesday, can you believe it? And insomnia. Do you suffer from insomnia? No. You see, I'm head of alternative medicine in this country. I don't suffer from things like that. Well, sometimes memories. I really can help. People do speak very highly of your knowledge. 
And look at you. You're a walking advertisement. Oh, thank you so much, darling. Uh, did you hear we're opening Broadlands to the public? Oh, dear. Yes, well, uh, inflation, what can one do? Yes, well, one must do something. One really must. I don't intend to give up. Well, onward. I kidnapped you, Barbara, and now I must let you go. This has been wonderful. Wonderful. And during, it would be an honour to help our last real English hero. You flatter me. Oh, hot ziggity dog, ziggity boom, what you do to me? It's so new to me. What Until we meet again. Me? Hot dog, ziggity boom, what you do to me? When you're holding me tight. Never knew that my heart could go zing that away, tingling that away, make me sing that away. Said goodbye to my troubles, they went that away. When we're settled in London, Barbara, I'm afraid we'll need to find you a job, otherwise. You see, now Daddy's been taken from us. Well, you, you see, the boys have to complete their education at Charterhouse, which is expensive, so... Of course. Perhaps you could learn shorthand and typing. Ronald, Tony, come and help with the bags, boys. How's it go? Now, quiet, please. I need complete concentration. From? Uh... From, uh, the dress was completely as she had imagined and fitted her like a glove. Suddenly, Thurston's arms were round her and he held her very close. You look beautiful in white, he said. I'm going to be the most wonderful, wonderful wife, she breathed. Quiet. Sorry, madam. I'm going to be the most wonderful, wonderful wife. Are you shocked that I should love you so overwhelmingly? And that when you touch me, it should excite me so wildly? Darling. Oh, he um, crushed her to him, oh. kissing her with a desire that could not be repressed. Mm. Mm. A passion like a fire leaping into flame as she responded to it. Is there a... I mean, is there something wrong? No. You seem... Maybe you could, uh... Maybe you should, uh... Why don't you say something? I've known you not to have something to say. I'm ready! <laughs> well, I'm a liner. <laughs> An ocean-going liner. <laughs> With real portholes and a chimney. <laughs> well, how do I look? Marvellous. Very good, B. Well, slightly ridiculous. Oh, you're a rotten brother, Ronald. It's fun. It's a charity ball at the Albert Hall. <laughs> I look wonderful. And I'm staging the tableau. Oh, well done. <laughs> oh, thank you, Mummy. It's called Britain and Her Industries, and I'm shipping. Oh, by Countess <clears throat> of Scarsdale is up in arms because she doesn't want to appear at the Albert Hall as cool. <laughs> but then I said, well... Wool isn't going to be terrifically flattering either. <laughs> It'll be so hot. Darling, 
going to the club. But Saki. Oh. Oh, mummy, I'm so sorry. This is Hugh, Saki's cousin. Sorry, shrapnel. At Passion Day, my husband was killed. At... Ronald, perhaps. Come on, Hugh, old man. Let's get you a glass of water. Oh, a present for me. How sweet, Hugh. Thank you so much, darling. <coughs> Mummy! Get me out of this! I beg your pardon? You got me out of the engagement with Pingo and the one with Alfie when he threatened to shoot himself. Please, Mummy, will you get me out of this? But Barbara, this... This is all you ever want? No! <laughs> No, you really don't understand. It's, it, it's really not like you and Daddy. It's... Barbara, you're married in the eyes of God, and that's the end of the story. Life is disappointing. One doesn't make a fuss about it. And happiness will come. You've only been married a year. Ronald, darling, how's Hugh? Better. You're right, Bri. She's fine. Oh, my goodness! Oh, my God, I have cocktails. In an hour, and I'm still dressed as a boat. Um, ah. Yes, 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 you need it. Just don't spend it all on books about dead prime ministers. Oh, Mummy, did I tell you? The Tatler want to photograph my interiors next week. Isn't that exciting? Please be a boy. Please be a boy. It will be a boy. Barbara. 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 Now, come on, this is ridiculous. Come, let me in. Barbara. Barbara! Barbara! Barbara. Arnold? She has eczema. No one marries a girl with eczema. No, you're pulling too tight. Careful. Sorry, madam. I... No, it's... it's not tight enough. What are you doing? Yes, that one. And the silver shoes. It would be impossible for a woman with those red highlights in her hair not to have the fires of passion somewhere within her, dormant, unawakened. It's him, he's here. Everybody, go away. Well, frankly, there was an incident. The bloody sword of state at the opening of Parliament. Not very heavy. The television lights were hot, I suppose, but suddenly I saw the floor coming up toward me in waves. Darling. Uh, the Queen said she hurried her speech to give me a fighting chance. Anne had her hands ready to catch me. Can you imagine? Bloody thing. You wouldn't fall. I didn't fall. You look magnificent. You watched it? Of course. You didn't notice anything? No. Here we are. My goodness, a cornucopia. Now, I have prepared a package. I did the same for Mrs. Gandhi. A thousand milligrams of vitamin E, the love, life, and sex vitamin. The magic pill. Vitamin A, complete health crafts. Ginseng for rejuvenation. Dr. Kissinger takes that, and so do the astronauts. And my brain pill. Now, 
Do they make you snatch a white bread sandwich at luncheon? I do know the pressure of your itinerary, Dickie. Oh, I have a jolly good breakfast, Bob. Because you are what you eat, don't you see? So many young men today, and I've made an extensive study, they cannot satisfy their young wives in bed. Really? I know, isn't it shocking? They're impotent due to an improper diet. Pesticides. And the fact that women simply won't peel potatoes anymore. Well, not me. They feed me terribly well. Oh, of course not you, darling. No, but the rest of England is facing a crisis in virility, however. Something really must be done. Anyway, it's all written down. Splendid. Mm. I shall rattle. Um, you know, I, I don't think I have any cash on me. Oh, darling, don't be silly. You are vital to the nation. I shall send you my osteopath, too. Now, last but not least, the elixir of life. Honey, I just don't want to go like Winston. Oh, no. That was terrible. Well, I won't let you. Just look at me. I worked six hours on the trot. I answered 10,000 letters and write 15 books a year. They don't want me to, but this year I'm going to write 20. I'm quite determined. A romance factory. And in times of strife, people need happiness and hope, and I can provide it. Excuse me, Lord Mountbatten. Madam, the Royal Philharmonic want you to choose your top ten love songs, and the Daily Mail would like a comment on prostitution. Later. One is constantly being asked to do these little things. Do carry on. Write a book for me, Barbara. For you? Well, for one of my charities. United World Colleges. Oh, yes. Yes! My period goes from Regency, because before that men wore wigs, which is totally unsuitable. Regency to 1914. I always end at the war. Something naval, perhaps. Yes. Yes. Oh, Dickie, I really think we should write this together. Oh, no, Barbara, it's not really my metier. Oh, but we'd have such fun. The regulations, the uniforms. Yes, well, people do often get that sort of thing wrong. Oh, we won't. Ian, darling? Mummy? I've had an idea. Let's ring the publishers. Oh, sorry, good. Do you have idea is working out well? And sack them. And then ring Bantams and offer them ten books next year. Ten? And then ring Corgis and offer them ten books. Well, that's twenty. That's twenty books in a year. I know. That's six thousand words a day, Mrs. Cartland. I know. Helen? I've been thinking. I could sing the songs for the Philharmonic. Sing? No, Mother, I think they just want you to choose the songs. No, but I could sing them. You can't actually sing, Mummy. Yoga, darling. And I shall need another television appearance. Are you sure that's a good idea? Why not? Russell Hart, you've been on. Oh, who else is being interviewed? Danny LaRue. Uh... Oh, Danny LaRue? No, they won't be able to tell us apart. No, find something else, something more serious. And no other women. making her pretty little daughter a good mixer straight away and rain who sits in a nursery window on her rocking horse is already the perfect hostess her engagement diary must be almost as full as her mother's well done darling thank god you're not a plain dumpy little girl 
romance with no kisses, a fine romance, my friend. This is, we should be like a couple of hot tomatoes. But you're as cold as yesterday's mashed potatoes. A fine Are you going to the club, darling? I thought I might just pop in. I shouldn't be too late. Jolly good. A fine romance you won't wrestle. You're just as hard to no. win as the easy friend. I haven't got a chance. Hello, Ronald. How was your day? What are you doing here? Well, uh, I've come to do some work. I'm helping the correct her novel. It's ten o'clock. Is it? Food riots on Oxford Street. The Tories don't get back in at the election. England's lost. We'll all pack up and go to the Dominions. Have you paid your rent? I think so. Thanks for the check. Let me say visit the office. Sorry, I haven't even managed to finish. Sweet punishment. Oh, come on. <coughs> Work. It's terrific you've taken up writing again, B. Yes. B. Why don't you write a serious book? I mean, you're terribly good at all this, but... I just... I just can't get him to do what I want, Ronald. It's because of the drink. Throat when, when he proposed. I get so low when I'm ill, I, I just don't think. You didn't love him. Of course I loved him. He was terribly handsome. And a Scot. I thought he was strong and silent and experienced. Rich. I was living above a knitwear shop with Mummy and a spinster. I couldn't afford to be a fool. All the good men got killed. Nonetheless, I still got 48 proposals. Did you know that? He's a nut, actually. Anyway, he's having an affair. No. I mean, that's fine. I'm ter terribly busy, and maybe I, maybe I didn't. What do you want me to do? Shall I kill him in a duel? <laughs> I may divorce him. We'd get a very comfortable settlement. Barbara? Hugh said he cried all the time at school. He was bullied because he... he put his shoes on the wrong feet. <laughs> In his pocket.
She's not even titled. She's just... She's just not me. Sir Patrick, thank you, Ronald said. Well, to waive your fee is truly... No, 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 no. The rich and privileged think they can bully a defenseless young woman and buy justice. What price freedom? Hmm? And of course, Ronnie's like one of the family. Lovely weekend walks and political discussions. We do so believe in him. Yes, people do. Uh, he can get terribly angry sometimes, but I think if that were controlled and, and channeled, well... Yes. Now? Yes, well, um, I'm quite happy to agree to a divorce. He can run away with his mousy Mrs. Major Helen Curtis. But if he thinks he can have custody of Rain, he's quite mad. Darling B. Yes? I'm afraid he's not going to do the honourable thing. Your husband has decided to countess you. He wants custody of his daughter. No. He's accusing you of adultery. Me? With whom? With his cousin. Phew. <laughs> With you? The servants say he's always in your bedroom, that you, uh... Call him darling and kiss him. Well, yes. I mean, I work in my bedroom. I entertain in there. I call all my friends darling and kiss them. He gives you presents. A dress for Ascot and a diamond bracelet? Well, yes. He gives me presents because he's in love with me. <clears throat> <coughs> no, please. Thank you. Press are humiliating me. I'm losing everything, Ronald. We have to go back into court now. Let me see. There was something different in his touch. Something strong and silent in his demeanour. She felt so weak, but so safe. But safer. Safer than she'd ever felt before. Ever felt before. After the humiliation and troubles of the last few days, he seemed to know exactly what to do. Tarinia had been waiting oh so very long. Waiting and hoping. Look, madam, here he is. He's so distinguished, isn't he? Barbara. In two days, I met the King and Queen of Sweden, installed the local May Queen, had a reunion dinner for the Kelly and spent the night at Windsor. Five speeches. That's more like it. I got my zip back, Barbara. Let's make romance. A title. Love at the helm. What do you think? Splendid. Good. I've had another look at a couple of your books, just to keep up with the Oh, head. darling, you read one, you've read them all. It's just a formula. Obviously. It might be sentimental guff to you and me, Barbara, but it hits the spot commercially, doesn't it? You are one very clever operator. Oh, no, Dickie, I'm not clever. <laughs> it certainly sells. Now, listen, villain drinks, gambles, ruins the family estate and name, hero, Often a cousin rescues and falls in love with the victim heroine and gets the old house back. Have I got it? Well, it's not really quite that simple. The heroine heals. She nurses him back to health. I mean, he may fall down a cliff or get mauled by a lion. Or in our case, perhaps, she saves his leg from amputation. Thank you. That sounds good. Denzel, Captain Denzel. Denzel. Conrad? One gets through so many names. 
what we have to work on is historical accuracy and a little bit of reality. There are, forgive me, some glaring mistakes in many of your other books. We agreed 1815. Then there were over 600 ships in commission, uh, manned by 130,127 men. Good, good. So a sea captain, Conrad Horn, takes an attractive passenger, Dolores, to the West Indies, fights a few sea battles and falls in love. I suppose he's handsome. Oh, yes. All my heroes are handsome. And often very good for the 12 bore. And then I fall in love with them. The West Indies. We were at war with France. <laughs> Tequila! Oh no, it must be Antigua. My son Glenn and I went there last year and it's enthralling. Barbara, it's 1815. Oh darling, we really don't want to get too hung up on specifics. It blocks spontaneity. My plots come from God. I say a little prayer and off I go. No, no, Barbara, you wanted historical truth. You see, life is difficult for my ladies. They have fat husbands, they have children with squints, they have an unending pile of washing. They don't necessarily need to know how many frigates Napoleon had. All right, but that doesn't mean we have to lie. Lie? No, of course not. But, I mean, even in factual books about history, your marvellous book about Indian partition, for example, inaccuracies do creep in. When we made In Which We Serve, Noel demanded absolute accuracy. You asked me to advise you. You want a naval theme. I was first sea lord, for goodness sake. You can't have the Battle of Trafalgar happening in Jamaica. But was Noel Coward ever translated into Punjabi? Or Hebrew or Japanese? No. Darling, this is my 505th book, and I'm here to tell you now, no one ever wants to know what really happened. It's too unpleasant. The only thing that really matters is that love conquers all. Ow! I've had quite enough of this. Ow, ow! Now there's only a few more, darling. Please. Please, darling, sit still. Aren't you going out for luncheon, Barbara? Well, Harry Carstairs was kind enough. No. No, I haven't had an invitation today. But that doesn't mean to say that we don't make the best of ourselves, does it, Grandma? No. We must remember who we are and look to our manners and God will provide. Remember always to be jolly good value. Because if one isn't rich, beautiful or titled, one must always be jolly good value. You won the case. You have custody of your lovely daughter and an adequate settlement. Five hundred pounds a year? It was all debts. No, but of course I'm very lucky. It's all so... It's disgraceful, all of it. I'm never going to rely on a man for money again. If you are ever lucky enough, ever lucky enough to be asked to marry again... I think the best thing to do, Mummy, is to pretend it never happened. Grandma? Yes? Mummy said to foresee. <laughs> Thank you, Rain. No one likes a clever girl. Mum has found me a Mayfair address. Oh, it's tiny, of course. Oh, thank goodness. Major Beaumont Thomas isn't seeking re-election at Kings Norton. Birmingham Kings Norton? That's our seat. That's the Cartland seat. Well, it isn't our seat. Our brother Tony lives there and there's a road called Cartland Road. It's your seat, Ronald. Put your name forward. Don't be silly, B. I know with every fibre of my being that this is the right thing to do for us. For England. B, I, I know how hard and horrible it's been. Oh, I, I really don't know what you're talking about. This... This is mint. I'm far too young. And how on earth would I afford it? Mum is still paying my bills. I'll get you the money. You have no money. Faith has never let you down. I will get you the money. It would cost at least a thousand pounds. I mean, at least. Because I would have to be independent. I couldn't be a 
party out to central office. Put your name forward. You're going to be prime minister. <laughs> well, that's what you've always dreamt of, isn't it? I'm going to make it happen. We worked together at the Daily Express a few years ago, and, well, I was just wondering if, um... Well, if you were looking for anyone at all... Well, um, what about spiritual bankruptcy? I was a gothic columnist. Yes, well, no, but, um, since then I have published three novels. S something about women and fashion. Two guineas. Oh, that's perfect. It's not easy to always look attractive. It requires determination and perseverance. Damn. That's terrible, Ronald. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Ba no. Ba 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 ba. Ba 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 ba. Ba ba ba. Ba ba ba. Ta 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 ta. Ta 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 ta. Ta 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 ta. Ta 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 ta. Ta 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 ta. Ooh, like that. Okay, release your shoulders, Ronald. Release your shoulders, I think. They're slightly tense. I can feel the, I feel the tension. The gate of freedom is open in India. Lord Louis Mountbatten, last Viceroy of India. With Lady Mountbatten, he enters Government House for the ceremonies which make oh, Pakistan full-fledged dominion. Next to arrive is Mohammed Ali Jinnah, first Governor General. As his final official, I lost her. Lord Louis delivers a message from Oh, Dicky. As Lady Mountbatten and Jinnah's sister Fatima, I remember the day she died. No, years before. I lost her years before. How long is it, do you think? before one moves on to the next plane after death. Do you know? The next plane? The next dimension, before one is reincarnated. I used to feel my brother, Ronald, so close by me. He had so much faith and energy. I used to see him, Dickie. And now I don't. And it frightens me. Come on, Barbara, it's so awful to be idle. We have so much to do. Yes, we have. We do, we really do. Come to the Soviet Embassy with me. Help with the taunt. No need to dress up too much, they're communists, remember. Tea? Yeah, yeah please. On the bench. Stand by to repel borders. <laughs> How do you repel borders? Stop changing the bed linen. No, we can't do it. <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> Spoof weddings? Paid hostesses? Oh, no, I'm sorry, darling. I sold freak parties to the Daily Mail. Have you finished? Darling, apparently, Lady Montague Jones, worth about £2,000 a year, was seen wearing trousers in open. Any use? Well, you'll have it in the morning. Oh, and Eileen, I'm Miss Hamilton. Oh. Why have you not finished? We deride people for being unemployed, but unemployment is really just enforced leisure. So why not make that leisure beneficial? Allotments, adult education... I'm here. I know you're there. Well, sir, why are you walking up and down over there? Because... because I mean it. <laughs> Ronnie, should I open up a cleaners? It's bound to be lucrative. People always need clean clothes. Yes. Yes. Clive of India, uh, Wolf conquering Canada, Cecil Rhodes. Yes. Yes. Self-reliance, faith in destiny, courage, 
the instincts which made these men and women heroes are exactly the same as those which inspire millions of people every day who stay at home, who endure hardship, who just do their job. They are heroes too. Sign here, please. Well, Mr. Cartland, you are now a candidate for the parliamentary seat of King's Norton. Title. It's the girly girl who catches the man. Some modern women, with their cropped hair and sensible shoes, may achieve public success, they may make a fortune, but it is their feminine, perhaps yes, even frivolous sisters, who will be chosen by the man to be his love, and his the wife, like and the mother of his children. Just keep it very soft. Thank you. Okay. Let's go. You ready? Yes, fine. Okay, here we go then. Three, two, one. It's my pleasure to be here at the lovely home of the Queen of Romance, who this week published her 500th book, Barbara Cartland. Barbara, you look wonderful. Thank you, darling. So do you. It's true. It's true, so I say it. Now, we all know Barbara Cartland, the best-selling novelist. But Bloody clever. The That's the way to sell books, John. All that pink certainly pays off. She says it gives the housewife something to aspire to. Hope she doesn't wear that outfit tonight. Pornography. I've stuck to my guns and the tide is beginning to turn. People said I couldn't do it, but I have. I'm bringing Should one do now. This Is Your Life? What do you think, John? It's a very popular programme, sir. I'm lonely and unhappy. I don't know which way to turn. You mustn't give up. Keep believing. Keep looking. And one day you'll find him. He's out there somewhere. Oh, yes. I sincerely believe he is. <laughs> Barbara! Darling! I'm so sorry I'm late. You know what they're like. You were magnificent on the television. Oh, darling, you watched. Indeed I did. Ah, it'll be. <laughs> darling. Would you like some champagne? I'd adore some champagne. Let's look for it. Oh, no. When I'm with a man, I'm very feminine because I prefer men to women. I think men are wonderful, wonderful. And I prefer a dominant man. There's no one more skilled in the feminine arts than Barbara Carter. Excuse me. Dickie and I are writing a book together about an experienced sea captain who res thank you, darling, who rescues a female passenger from a brutish and degenerate man. We're having such fun. Darling, Mummy, we've arrived safely in Germany and the Bavarian air is splendidly invigorating. I insist that Bonnie takes a proper rest before the election campaign, but he insists we walk and walk and bathe. <laughs> I'm going to write a book about all our ideas about real life. A serious book? Mm hmm. Oh, this is wonderful. Think about sex, Ronald. Well, I think probably well, I think it may be given too much importance. Yes. So do I. But I think of course it's part of love. Hmm physical symbol of, and therefore, divine, um... Force? Yes, divine force. Wonderful gift from God. As long as it's part of real love. Oh, yes. But 
be what happened with Harry Carstairs. He was very keen. No, he proposed, of course. So did Niggs and the Duke of Sutherland. V, that's... Niggs is infertile and the Duke of Sutherland is already married. Oh. <laughs> Besides, we are far too busy. Yeah. You may have been selected. I'm nearly there. You certainly mustn't sacrifice. And one marries for love, Ron. True love. Yes, of course. He is, after all, our last true English hero, and he still has many duties. That's his granddaughter. No, no, that's Jennifer Sheridan, I think. He likes to give her riding lessons. <laughs> The Soviets have asked me to speak of love in Russia. I said, well, if you want me, you're going to have to ask the Americans first. Cold War or no? <laughs> I am I. Go into a dark room on your own and say to yourself, I have nothing, no possessions, no friends, nothing. I am alone. And in this darkness, ask yourself what is left. Only you. Only you. You're so brave, B. Really? You could do anything now? Anything? Well, this campaign is vital to you, Ronnie. And to the family. Uh, and, of course, for England. And for you, B. Put your energy and your faith where they should be. Go into politics. No! Why not? <laughs> well, it's true. I, I have never been this happy. <laughs> I've never ever been this happy. <laughs> we'll, we'll go on holiday together next year, won't we, Ronnie? We'll go every year. We'll always be together, B. The uniforms look quite good on the men. But don't you think the Frau lines look dreadfully plain? Touch the stars. What do you think? Very good. It will be about politics, spirituality, the afterlife. All of our ideas, Ronald. Yes, it's exactly the sort of thing you should be writing. We? With you? You are essential. I'm fighting an election, B. Well, yes, of course. So am I. Hello. I'm campaigning on behalf of your prospective Conservative MP, Ronald Cartland. Lucky like us. Oh. <laughs> yes, it is rather lovely, isn't it? Um, would you like one? It gives me enormous pleasure to recommend to you your prospective Conservative MP, Ronald Cartland. The world contains Mussolini and Hitler. This is the world we are dealing with. And until the nature of man has changed, we shall be forced to fight. Perhaps to die for what we believe to be right and good. Time is short. The freedom of England, of the whole world, is at stake now. We may be ill prepared, do but do doubt not doubt that, that once united, united and, and determined, determined we, we will, will succeed. succeed. For the spirit, for the spirit of the ordinary of the English man English and woman and is unbeatable, unbeatable. Indestructible. indestructible. It will not. It fail. will not fail us. Those whom the gods love die young, 
there's nothing more for them to learn, and so a magnetic power draws them into a higher state. Like a balloon which can no longer be held down by a slender string, they snap the bodily cord that holds them and... and go. Come on, me! Hello? I'm sorry to call so late. It's me. Oh, Dickie. Thank God, thank God. What's wrong? Where is he? Where's Ronald? Barbara, Ronald's dead. No, he's missing. He's gone missing. I used to see him all the time. They said it was my failing eyesight. It was my bloody eyesight. He was here. I think one needs to be robust. Oh, yeah. Yes, I'm Of course, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, don't apologize. I couldn't sleep. I went down to the office. I think I'm bankrupt. Bankrupt? Surely not. Well, I have it in front of me, some kind of overdraft arrangement. Oh, darling. People use overdrafts to facilitate cash flow all the time. Your secretary will know. I haven't kept a tight enough ship, Barbara. There's dry rot in the Wedgwood room, a leak above my desk, a bloody bucket in the office. How can we open this place to the public? How's Jennifer Sheridan? My archivist. I've just married her. What? He's a nice young man. My family say stop interfering, but I can't resist a little matchmaking. Why? Barbara? Yes. We'll talk tomorrow. I've thought of something that might cheer us both up a little. What's that? My funeral arrangements. Yes, darling. Correspondence, madam. Hello. I'm inside. B. No. I'm inside the best club in the world. <laughs> I wore daddy's cufflinks for the speech yesterday. Such a honour. Be. I am my own peg and attendant. <gasps> I like school. Oh, Ron, listen. At 29, Ronald Cartland is always exquisitely dressed. He is the youngest MP in the house. His maiden speech about the distressed areas and the Welsh miners distinguished him as courageous, outspoken and serious. Cartland is a first-rate member and may well have ambitions to be Premier one day. They are well-founded. Wish you were here. I don't really approve of women MPs, Ronald. I'd like the royal family to have finished their coffee five minutes before the train arrives at Broadland. The train? With my body. Oh, your body? Oh! What is it? Bloody power cut. Just a moment. Bloody unions. Darling, we're being held to ransom. We must do something. The civil unrest, unemployment, we've seen it all before. Storm clouds are gathering and we're lying in bed. What are we going to do? Well, I said to the Prime Minister he should go out on a white charger with sword drawn, as it were. Dickie, we don't want 
Jim Callahan on a white charger. We need you. You. There's a little matter of constitutional legitimacy, Barbara. One can get into terrible trouble mounting a crew. Dickie, you are supreme commander of the Allied forces, first admiral of the fleet, the last viceroy and cousin of the Queen. What could be more legitimate? I'm retired. Oh, don't be so silly, darling. Isn't the Queen worried about the, the communists in the trade unions? No, that's not for me to say. Helen, you're hovering. Madam, I am so, so sorry. I've really no idea what you're talking about. Tell Nigel we need cake. We need you at the helm, Dickie, and we must start right away. Barbara, I'm patron of over 170 charities. Well, we're all busy doing good work. Ambulances are unmanned. The dead lie unburied. Perhaps you're too tired. No, of course not. What did you have in mind? The forum? Think tank? A luncheon. And we'll take it from there. Well, I'll see you tomorrow at the cocktail party. Oh, look, B, I don't drink or smoke or gossip, so cocktails are... I really haven't talked to you. And the proof of our book will be ready. Of course, the book. What a clot! Ronald. I simply can't wait to read it, B. I'll try. They sent me to the whip three times and then they offered me PPS. That's a promotion. To silence me. Ronald, what is the point of alienating the whole hierarchy? I'll see you tomorrow in the park. Amid Labour cries, Tory MP Ronald Cartland made a ferocious attack on the government, accusing them of cowardice and lies. Prime Ministerial hopeful, Cartland may have burnt his bridges politically, I've read but... it! Well, I wasn't looking for popularity. I read your book last night, B. Oh, my book? No. It's remarkable. Yes, yes, well, it won't sell. So what's the point? I'm going to marry Hugh. You're going to... I'm going to marry Hugh McCorkadale. Congratulations, that's... After Christmas. It'll be a very quiet wedding. Rain adores Uncle Hugh. He's a very good chap. And a very good shot. Did you know he bagged 12 pheasant at the shoot? B, I thought he was going to... I thought he was, um, critically ill. Well, a bullet entered his lung at Passchendaele, and he did actually die. Really. In no man's land. And then he was revived. I... It's an incredible story. <sighs> we are very keen to have sons. Well, I'm very pleased. At last you'll have some sort of proper financial security in your life. You can stop writing those silly romances and those ghastly society hostesses will leave you alone. Who pays for your rallies and your social volunteers, Ronald? Who, who pays for your paper clips? I'm aware of your friends' generosity and I'm very glad they enjoy dressing up for charity, but I can't help noticing some of them seem to admire Herr Hitler and his adorable little brown shirts. Without us, none of this would be here! You wouldn't even be in the house! Without me, you couldn't afford your bloody Christian conscience! Your untouchable... Untouchable rightness! I still pay your rent!
I'm so sorry. One more. Every August, Hugh will go to the Orkneys for the shoot. Rain will go to Mummy, and you and I will will go on holiday, just as we always do. Nothing will change. Please, Ronald. Nothing. Darling, I must send you this morning all my love and thoughts. You know what you have meant to me these last few years, much more than I can ever hope to tell you. You have been my support, inspiration, courage, faith, and love. I've sought them from you often, never in vain. Now, after today, it can never be quite the same, our relationship. But I'm not unhappy. It took just a moment for him to peel off his elegant, tight-fitting coat before he plunged into the water, swimming strongly, swimming with the swiftness of a man in peak condition. Am I making a fool of myself, Helen? Sorry, madam? Am I making a fool of myself? No. No. Stacy says that you have the best legs ever. Not a vein, no puffiness, like porcelain, she says. Yes, I have a good skin. <laughs> Lord Mountbatten and I would like to welcome you to the campaign. England. England is in disarray. Uh, there is a, 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 the water is poisoned, and um, there are there are chemicals in the food and and dry rot in our great houses. There, there's rubbish in the street and, and pornography and venereal disease and bad manners. <laughs> oh, you may laugh, but we must pay attention to manners. It is how we manage to carry on when life is just too terrible. However, I have great pleasure in introducing Lord Mountbatten. Now, this is splendid. The indefatigable Barbara. <laughs> I met an old friend the other day and he said, Dickie, you're looking terribly well. And I said, that's thanks to Barbara Cartland's pills. The remarkable lady. Really, he said, I'm surprised you trust her. She's destroying the National Health Service. I don't think so, he said. Barbara's far too busy for that. She writes 15 novels a year. 20. <laughs> 20. She never written a novel in her life, he said. Well, nearly came to blows, and then it dawned on me he was talking about Barbara Castle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, the Prayers in Schools programme, I think that that's uh, very... As my brother said, England and all it stands for is passing into your keeping. And when you, in turn, pass it on, what sort of a place will you have made of it? Will you have led it along the road to a higher civilization? Or will you, through neglect and indifference, have let your country and your fellows down? Dickie, Dickie. I saw him, I saw him, and I know he approves. We're doing something really important here. Oh! And I have a present for you. My book. 
Touch the stars. A clue to happiness. Philosophy. Thank you, Barbara. Now I have a little something for you. Oh, darling. Thank you for the wonderful new office at Broadlands. And thank you for the osteopath. Oh. Uh, oh, I love him. I love him. So, Conrad and Dolores have overcome the obstacles of true love. And suddenly he realizes his desire to awaken her passion and teach her love. But, of course, he feels guilty because he must exercise huge self-control. Is he an amputee? Oh, no, darling. She saved his leg, remember? Oh, yes, of course she did. Thank God. Anyway, amputees are misunderstood. Blood flow is enhanced. And they make the most athletic and long-lasting of lovers. Really? Oh, medical fact. I mean, Nelson. Not much to look at. He was too short. But once he lost his arm, things really began to look up. Helen, let's just be adults about this. It was just a little fun. Helen! The Duke of Windsor was my best man and my cousin, Barbara. I know, darling. That's why I'm asking you. Apparently, he couldn't get it up, and she had bad sheep. What's it? Are you saying he gave up a quarter of the Earth's surface and all he got in return was a dreadful fuck? Uh, am I? But seriously, how's the American market? Oh, buoyant, buoyant. What chance the life and times of Mount Bat? Well, it's 13 hours of television, darling, but I'll certainly put in a word. I'm so glad we met again, Barbara. Oh, so am I, darling. You cheer me up. You make me feel young and alive. What more could a chap want? Helen! Oh, Helen. Shh. When two hearts are dead, memories we share. If young Rock and Bart is come out to the west, through all the white border, his steed will be Wayne, I can't hear you. You start again. We're not going to Switzerland on holiday. You and Ronald? Oh, dear, I'm sorry. He says it's just too dangerous. It is. <laughs> <coughs> Maybe we could go somewhere as a family. In England. Rain, don't stop! Why are you stopping? You bully her, Barbara. Darling. One day she could be dub of the ear, but no one will even look at her if she mumbles. Yes, well, she's too old to be whacked with a hairbrush. Would it be silly? She's beginning to make the best of herself, and that's really all that matters. German forces have invaded Poland from the north, south and west. Widespread bombing has been reported. The Polish army has been defending their borders and has suffered many casualties. I despair for the Prime Minister to adjourn the House at such a critical time. Yeah, you may jeer, you may shout, but we are in a situation where within a month we may be going to fight and we may be going to die. We gorgeous creature. <laughs> You wouldn't actually have to go, Ron. MPs are exempt. Tony's regiment will be in France by now. Peace with honor. You know, when Hitler walked into Poland, the right honorable member of West Sussex said to me, I just can't believe it. He gave his word to the prime minister. What did you say? I think I said, it's not cricket, is it? Did you? <laughs> he gave his word. <laughs> 
A bit more to the side. I've been invited to America to celebrate the publication of my hundredth millionth book. Isn't that lovely? We're terribly excited. New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, every major television studio is begging her to appear. You see, the world had almost forgotten the precious secrets of love, and I'm bringing back to them. I'm bringing back true love. You are now the most prolific author of the 20th century, and your who's who entry takes up more space than any other woman. Yes, it does. But did you know that only Lord Mountbatten has a larger entry than you? Oh, really? Well, there you are then, a match made in heaven. He's the only true hero we have left, and the most exciting man in the world. Is it? I mean, is it a match? Uh, well, you know, Dickie and I go back a long way. I'm sorry, I'm not at liberty to talk. So, so has he proposed? Oh, no, no, no. Oh. You won't catch me out like that. We both have large houses to keep up, mm. and, you know, there are many practical considerations. Did you know I'd had 50 proposals in my life? That's fantastic. Mm. Men just fall in love with me. It's always been that way. Darling, hang on. No, I'm not going to marry her. Well, you shouldn't believe everything you read in the press. Well, she's a very smart operator. She knows how important it is to keep a high profile. Look, I must go. I'm seeing her this afternoon and I'll tell her. Tell the rest of the family I'm not going to marry her. Dickie, darling. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. It's wonderful. It was last week, you know. Oh, I know, but we've been waiting. You look wonderful. Come. These are for you. Thank you. And this is for you. Your arms around me Dream lover Your romance has found me I'm held in your spell Knowing so well Dreams never tell We too can leave the world behind Discreet can find us Dream lover of mine Secrets divine I am sharing with you Hello? Barbara, I 
I've received a letter this morning from the Under Secretary of State for War. Yes. And it informs me that that J. A. H. Cartland is reported missing by his unit. And no, no, Mummy, you've got that wrong. That that that's Tony. You've just said Tony. Yes, that's Tony. Oh. And also. That R. H. Cartland, M. P. R. A. is reported missing by his unit. Further particulars will be forwarded as soon. Both of them, Barbara. Both of them. I want to marry you. Yes, Miss Garden. I cannot believe that I'm the first man to have proposed to you. No, but... Barbara? Come on, darling, open the door, please. It's open. Are you all right? He's missing. He's not dead. So we can't let him down and lose hope. Observed Captain Conrad as he set about pulling the crew into shape. He looked up suddenly and their eyes met. The color rose in her cheek like the dawn breaking over the horizon. Oh, we were essential to each other. And when we were together, we were both perfectly happy. Perfectly. What had happened to him? Well, he was missing for a whole year and then they told us that He'd been shot in the head at Dunkirk. Everyone since Ronald has seemed inferior. But perhaps... Mrs. Cartland, Lord Mountbatten's valet on the phone for you. Well, put him through. Hello, John. Oh, well, let me look. Quick, quick, quick. Um, yes, the fifth looks very good. Uh, has Lord Louis given any indication of what it is he wants to discuss? Oh, well, that's lovely. We'll look forward to it. Goodbye. Maybe you'll live at the big house in Broadlands. Maybe you'll be able to stop working. Oh, madam! Oh, Helen, no, please. I really don't like being touched. The Maharaja, an old friend. We'd just finished a jolly good lunch. We were waiting for coffee. He leant in. I leant in. I thought he was going to tell me some scurrilous intimacy, and suddenly he's on the floor in front of me, poking with my shoe. Dead. Darling. Massive heart attack. All the way over here, and John said that's why he came, to die at the feet of the last Viceroy of India. Nice chap. Coffee? Oh, yes, please. You know, I think I shall finish our book tomorrow. Oh, splendid. We've had a marvellous time with it, haven't we? Yes. Barbara... There is something I've that enjoyed I... writing that book 
more than any other. Well, so have I. I've enjoyed it immensely. You are, of course, the real writer. Oh, no, darling. You are essential. Barbara, there is something I... Yes, Dickie? It's just that... Coffee for two, please. Yes, darling. I think we could talk about this when I get back from the holiday. Oh, yes, of course. I can wait. Now, don't forget to take your vitamins. Certainly not. You've saved my life, Barbara. Now, he said to Dolores, teasingly, you are quite sure you want to marry me. You realize I never asked you formally. I love you, she said. And I pray every moment of the day that I will make you the wife you want. Will you really leave the Navy and stay with me? Won't I bore you? You could never do that, Conrad replied. Anyway, I want to take my place in the House of Lords and fight for our seamen. I cannot do these things without your love and inspiration. His lips were suddenly on hers, and she felt a flame of fire rising in her breasts, which was so exciting, and yet at the same time, part of the glory of God. He was fierce, passionate, and demanding, and she wanted to give him what he wanted. Sorry to disturb you, Mrs. Carland. It's, uh, it's Lord Mountbatten. Uh, we just heard on the radio. Uh, Lord Mountbatten and four members of his family have just been killed by the IRA. Uh, they were in a boat out fishing. There was a bomb. They blew them up. He's dead. He's dead, and uh, uh, two boys. One was his grandchild. Oh, my God. There is no such thing as death, so please don't cry. Now, the Lord and the Labrador The Lord and the Labrador. Aurelia opened the door to the balcony and stepped out into the evening. The captain of the frigates cut a slim, dark figure. He looked up at the beautiful sunset. And Aurelia, even in her sadness, 
could not but be struck by his fine, masculine profile. Did tonight's programme set your heart a flutter? Have your say on the BBC4 website. Next tonight, Robert Robinson interviews the lady herself in the book programme.